Hello, Calc kids. This is Mr. Bean. Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. Today's lesson, we're going to focus in on how to use accumulation functions and integrals together in more word problems and some more application problems. Now, before you get too nervous about this, it's actually going to be pretty easy because we've already covered this in a little bit in unit six. And then with our last lesson, when we dealt with velocity, it actually just fits in really nice into what this is, what's going on here. So when you integrate a rate, when you integrate a rate, you get net change, this right here. So anytime you see an integral, if you're doing the rate of change of something, then what it gives you is the net change of the item that you're working with here. So just like when we had the integral of velocity, because velocity, right? If I thought of this as velocity, velocity is like the rate of change of position. We, would, we got displacement and displacement is net change of position. So it's the same idea of what we covered in our last lesson. But of course, it's going to be things beyond just position, velocity, acceleration. So let's take a look at this first problem. We have a storm that's going through and washing away sand on a beach. And uh, let's see what's happening here. It's causing the edge of the water to get closer to a nearby road. Okay, so the distance between the road and the water is getting smaller and smaller. Um, so the rate that in which it's decreasing is modeled by this. Now the key here is rate. So we're given the rate at which this is decreasing, the distance between the road and the edge of the water. Um, so T hours after the storm began, the edge of the water starts off 200 feet from the road. If the storm lasted four hours, how far is the water from the road after the storm? So here's how you set this up. Before the storm, it's at 200. So I'm gonna write that we are at 200 and I'm going to either add or subtract something. Well, this rate is represents how much is being taken away between the road and the water. It's how much is decreasing. So I'm going to subtract this rate, but it's integral. The integral of the rate will give me net change, right? So I wanna go from zero hours, the start of the storm, to four hours, the end of the storm. And then instead of rewriting this whole thing, e raised to the whatever, I'm gonna say just R of T, dt. And I'm allowed to do that because it refers to what r of t is up there. And then I can say that, that equals, and now I just grab my calculator and I type in this whole thing, 200 minus, I did my math nine, zero to four, and then there's the rate with respect to x. And there we go, 196. Let me drag that over to my screen. And we, okay, good. Now let's write that out. 196.93 seven. And then what are my units? Well, it's the net change. If the rate of change was feet per hour, then the integral of that will just be feet. And there's my answer. That's how you set this up and solve it. And a calculator is going to be used on quite a bit of these problems today. But let's go back and just take a look at this. So 200 again, that was what my starting point was. That's how far away the water and the road are. And then I'm subtracting the rate at which it is already decreasing. All right, let's do another one. Here we have a store with a five hour sale and it says that the rate at which shoppers are entering is gonna be modeled by E of T. Now on this problem, we don't know what E of T equals. We don't have an equation out for it, but that's okay. We don't need one because of what the directions are gonna say. When the sale starts, there are 70 shoppers in the store. Write, but do not solve, an equation involving an integral to find the time x when the number of shoppers in the store is 200. This is a really common type of a problem to see on a free response section of the AP exam. And it's really unfortunate that so many kids will miss this problem because it's not that hard. So I've thrown several of these into the practice today and on the master checks as well for you to be able to get through and practice this. So make sure you understand how to do these as you work through the practice because it's really not that bad and it's almost like free points on an AP exam if you just get this. Oh, and I have to assume that no one's leaving the store. I know that's not realistic, but if we don't put in that no one's leaving the store, then how are we gonna know when there's 200 shoppers? So let's just say we start with 70, so let's set that up. We have 70 shoppers and let's add how many are entering the store. We have a rate at which they're entering. And so if we take the integral of the rate, that gives us the net change of how many have come into the store. So we just have to say between when and when. We wanna say from the start of the sale until we don't know. We're trying to figure out how long that takes, right? Right between yourself an equation and the integral to find the time X. So this is my X right there. And then of course this with respect to T. And we want this to equal 200. When does it get to 200 shoppers in the store? So we started with 70. We add the net change of the shoppers that are entering the store. And then we're trying to say, what, what time does that happen? 
So this is the setup. We don't have to solve this. It was just setting up the equation. So this is a really good one to understand. Rewind and watch this part again if you didn't understand what I was doing to set that up. So you've got the original, you got the rate of change uh, here, and then you take the integral of it to get the net change. And when does it equal 200? Next up, we got this tank. Water's being pumped into a tank at a rate modeled by R of T. Recognize again that when you see the word rate, you have to really focus in on that this is a rate and it's liters per hour. So you look at the table. Yep, it's liters per hour. R is differentiable, decreasing from zero to eight. And then we've got selected values of R of T. Okay, and then we also say here that at time T equals zero, there's 5,000 liters of water. Now, some of you might be looking, well, 5,000 liters, look, right here it says at zero, there's 3,000. What's going on here? Well, that's because this is not how much water's in the tank. Remember, this is the rate. This is liters per hour. There, so it's changing by 3,000 liters per hour. We're starting with 5,000 liters in the tank. All right, so the first part, what does zero to eight of R of T represent? If we take an integral of a rate, what does that equal? It gives us net change. So we just have to figure out how to write that in a sentence. And that's this. It is the amount of water that is pumped into the tank over the eight hour period, over, or you could say over maybe the first eight hours, however you want to say that, so from zero hours to eight hours. So now let's estimate it using a left Riemann sum. Right, so if we take the integral of this, that's just area under the curve of th these values, but we don't know what R of T is, so we're just gonna use a Riemann sum. So let's set that up. Uh, left Riemann sum, so I do the width of this first rectangle is just a one, that's easy. And then the height of it on the left side, the height on the left side is 3000. Plus, and now I go the width of the next rectangle, that interval there, the width is two, and the height of this interval, the height of the rectangle, is 2,500. Remember, it's the left side. And the next one, the width of this rectangle, this interval is three, and the width on the left side is 2,100. And then the last interval, the distance there is two, the width of that rectangle is two, and then the height on the left side is 1,500. And then from there, it's just a matter of simplifying this down and that's going to equal 17,300. Again, a calculator would be okay on this to help you get through it if you want. 17,300, and then what are my units? 17,300 liters. If it was liters per hour, the integral of that will just be liters. And the last part of this one, based on this estimate, how many liters of water are in the tank after eight hours? So this is how much it's changed by, but we started with 5,000. Right there, 5,000. So we just say that there are now 22,000 300 liters. Okay, we're doing well. Just one more thing to cover and then we're good. We're all done. This is another table, same type of a scenario here. We've got a tank that's being filled in, but I wanted to show you the difference here of when you are just given something that is not a rate, right? Here we have W of T is just liters. So it's how much is actually in the tank and it is not a rate of change. Sometimes they'll do this to you. So you just have to be careful about how you work through this. So at zero, we have 5,000 liters. After one hour, we have 9,800 liters. After eight hours, there are 22,000 22, liters in the tank. So what does this represent? So this represents the same thing as the problem above. And that is that it, we're taking an integral of a rate. See, it's W prime this time. It's not just W, it's W prime. So it's still the amount of water that is pumped into the tank over an eight hour period. But now this is a little bit weird. How do we find the integral of W prime? See, we're not finding an integral of W if we were doing the integral of W, we'd have to use a Riemann sum. But when we do the integral of W prime, we take the antiderivative of this. So what's this going to equal? It's going to be the, the antiderivative of the derivative is just the original function W of T. But we're evaluating it from 0 to 8. So now we plug in the 8 first, W of 8 minus, and then plug in the 0, W of 0. And so then what does that equal? We just use this table to know. W of 8 is 22,000. And then we subtract, and then W of 0 is just 5,000 for a total of 17,000. And what is it? It's how much water was pumped into the tank. It's a really simple thing. It's actually just kind of like a, a very basic math problem. If you start with 5,000 and you end with 22,000, you have a 17,000 liters that were added into the tank and then that's it okay so the the key here was just recognizing how to evaluate this part of it what it means to take the antiderivative of this derivative and then plug in your values eight to zero okay we've covered it all so that's it for eight three i rock that mastery check and i'll see you back in our next lesson